All right, guys. So this video, I'm going to be showing you how to install the ceramic. This is a, this is not a Triangle Labs OT ZHD Hotton. It is similar, it, but and uh, I believe they come from the same factory, but it is indeed a a clone, if you want to call it that. Um, basically, what you receive in the package is the uh, I'll, I'll purchase the one that I used in the, in the video in the, in the description down below, but you basically be getting the the hot in itself. I did disassemble mine again so I can show you how the installation is and what you need to modify in order to make it work on the S1 Pro. So basically when you get it, it's going to be it's going to be the nozzle. In my case, the nozzle came pre-attached. You might it might not come attached, but in case it's not attached, you want to leave it unattached until the end of the installation. So you get the heater. This is a ceramic heater. You get the thermistor, silicone sock, and this is the little retaining clip. You will need two additional things. You will need to get two. Um, those are M two by eight screws. Um, the ones that come stock on your on your hot end, they will not work because they are too long. Okay. So you will need that in order to make it work. And I'm gonna pull the old hot end out. This is the old one. So as you can tell it's about eh, about twice as long but it's a lot slimmer, which is really, really cool. Um, getting those in picture there. You will need to, um, you don't need to take the full extruder apart, but you will need to have a mod that can accommodate for the extended length of the CR touch. So in the description, I'm gonna leave this mod down below. This is a slightly modified um print um by so the maker of this one is he's called uh xander 40 r93 on thingiverse and the mod is called a sorry i paused the video for a second but it's a uh laranja hot end cr touch holder it wasn't initially made for a volcano hot end I modified it just to be a little bit longer to accommodate for the CR touch since this one is a little bit longer than a volcano hot and somehow. So that would just make sure that um, is, you know, suited for it there. Um, and the package, once you get this, you also get a little uh, packet of thermal grease. Um, I'm going to quickly show you how the installation process or how the assembly is for this one. Uh, but basically, um, uh, well, actually, before you do that, you do need to make one modification, um, and that's going to be to the thermistor. The thermistor comes with a stock. Um, let me just pull it out real quick here. It does come with this stock JS, I think it's a two millimeter connector. Um, but on the, on the breakout board, it does not fit this size. It needs to be a 1.25 JST connector. Now, luckily I did have um, a bunch of these around. So basically what I did is, I don't think I have any more parts, but I took, I don't have any more of um, the, the male connectors, but basically I had one of these wires. I kind of cut it and then I did solder it in place. Now you do, uh, before you do that, you kind of, because um, this comes like this, and you kind of want to trim and leave a little bit of the wire exposed because um, even though this looks like copper wire, there are some thin cable soldered to it, which were soldered to this. So in order to avoid any issues, I left a little bit of the cable there that I could then strip off and have a little bit of cable revealed so that I can solder these this connector to it and then um, shrink tube it as well. Now uh, this is a thermistor, so it does not matter as far as I know which orientation you solder it in. So you can um, doesn't matter which which cable what goes where. So uh, you should be fine. Um, now the 
couple extra things so you know. The heat break is about the same. It's, it's, if anything, it's a tiny bit shorter on this. So just double check with your um, PTFE tube that goes inside of here just to make sure it makes contact with it. So when you're feeding filament, it's a little bit easier going. But now back to the installation or the assembly. Um, you will notice there's two flat spots. This one here, this is where your clip um, stops. And on this side is where your um, ceramic um, heat, heat block goes into. So you'll basically add a little dab of um, thermal paste there. And then you'll kind of apply a little bit of pressure to spread out the thermal paste. If you ever installed a CPU, it's kind of like about the same thing. You um, put it in there and you kind of spread it out. So I'm going to have to replace mine because I did remove it for this video. So I'm not going to clean it off um, since it's still pretty fresh. But, you know, if you ever saw the, <laughs> if you ever saw the CPU, um, you know, I, I think less is more in this case. So it, it just needs to make enough contact. You don't have to go crazy with a the thermal grease. Plus, you don't have enough to be wasting it either. So you'll probably have enough for like maybe one or three applications if you're conservative. But you'll basically do this. And this is on the, on the long side where the little stop is on the bottom there. And then you apply pressure and it will kind of like sit in place. It will still fall off, but it will sit in place just to give you enough time to install your um, your uh, thermistor. Your thermistor goes into this very tiny hole right there. I'm not sure if you guys can see it, but there's a little hole right there. You do want to get a little bit of thermal grease in there as well in that tiny hole just to get the most um, thermal conductivity, if that's the right word for it. And then once you have this, You'll basically hold this way, and this clip, look at the orientation, you're going to clip it in this way here. And then you're going to push it all the way back there. Okay. So um, to, to move this back, you kind of want to hold the thermostat in place and also the, the little ceramic key block, and just push it in. Now, in my case, this was a little loose. So you want if it's a little too loose for you, if it's not making, it's not, it's not going to be super tight. But if it's not making pressure or if this, these are not like touching together, just remove it and kind of squeeze it until they kind of touch. Maybe squeeze a little bit even more just to make sure it doesn't like move away too much. It's, it's still going to move. And um, when you, for example, install the, um, the silicone sock, it's, it, it might actually, when you take it off, take this with it as well. So just be cautious of this. And the way the silicone sock goes is you notice this little... Um, Hole here, the hole goes lined up with the ceramic heat block. And then you just kind of just want to push it in there all the way. And it'll look something like this. So at this point, your uh, heat block is ready to be installed onto your extruder. So the way we're going to do that is going to be by, oh, don't, uh, one more thing is um, I do recommend you add a little bit of thermal grease as well on the heat block itself not a lot just a little bit and then get it in there and kind of like um spread it spread it around like that yeah just to just to give it like something to contact with now um if you, if you notice the the um, breakout board goes in this direction now the, in my case because this is not um the original from triangle labs the wiring is a little bit long so you kind of want to accommodate for that I like to install the wiring facing that way on the extruder. So I can kind of like wrap it around and then bring it through the um, breakout board, which makes it a little bit easier and the cables aren't hanging out on this side if you do it that way. Just makes it a little bit cleaner. But um, the next step you want to do is um, install these little um, screws. Now, it is easier if you install the screws while the silicone sock is off. Um, and these are 1.5 millimeter um, Allen wrench screws, if I can find it here. Just had it. There it is. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten one side. And then I'm going to grab the other screw there. And install it. Again, the depending on what model you buy, you might not buy this exact model hot end. 
Um, I know in some other models, this little um, thing comes off. In this case, on, on mine, it's there. It doesn't come off. It's not removable, which I think is better. But you want to snug these down. Even pressure, not too tight, not tight at all, I would say, because you're also going to um, tighten those 2 millimeter um, grub screw on top. And this will basically hold everything in place. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten this down. Not too much pressure. Uh, if you put too much pressure, if you will tighten it, you might damage the um, heat break. Maybe. I'm not sure. But don't over tighten it. And once you're done, it should look like this. Make sure everything's firmly in place. In my case, it is. And the way I like to route this wiring is going to be um, kind of like in this orientation here. We'll do the wiring once we put the um, the um, shroud in place. So that's going to be on the next video. I'm going to upload this video the way it is. This is just how to install this part. And then I'm going to show you how to install the um, this one, which is super easy on the next video. So part two coming up.